Awesome. Appreciate it. Thanks for being here. Yeah, man. Yeah, so um, yeah, appreciate you being here, battling the elements, which hadn't, hadn't been that bad, but cold. Um, again, we just, uh, you know, we're in the second signing period, so we're able to add a few more guys here today. Um, I don't know, I, you know, I guess recruiting never stops. You start looking at next year, we can find some guys late, but we're going to be smart. There's a later period. I think the last two weeks of April is a second open period for transfer players if you want to look at that. But, uh, you know, again, our whole thing we got in here, you guys heard us the first time, try to stabilize the team, had the early signing period. Uh, I think we what, signed, what, seven, eight in that first period, whatever it was. Um, we went through the mid-year period. You guys talked about that. Those guys are here. We've added eight guys uh, that are here that have gotten classes. At, uh, Coaches did a really good job. You know, we had people that weren't from here, and within a few days, uh, we had about a week, week and a half to play with trying to, to you know, get people here. Um, uh, we had to background check with academics or the type of kid, or what's his purpose for transferring? Did he fit? And again, you're trying to fit into a school that you're coming into. So really, what is the school where you're coming into a locker room, and what is this locker room you're trying to fit the best you can. At the same time, there's some common characteristics you're looking for. So I thought we did. I was, I was proud of those coaches the, just to, to flip over some stones and not just find a guy, but try to find. There were some guys that uh, uh, we didn't pursue or didn't uh, follow up with or maybe didn't get. But sometimes I thought it worked out pretty good. The guys, we got been pleased with those guys. They're here. They're in classes. We've started workouts and all that deal. When we finished that, from, I think the last time I guess we saw you guys, did we get together in January? January? 11, 12, something like that, maybe. I think after school it started because we talked with those guys. From there, it was kind of we had a few days that week to, to see our team work out, which I thought was critical for the new coaching staff just to see their, the numbers they had, the players, and all that stuff. So we hit the road running. We had, we had a one-day recruiting period uh, coming off the dead period. The dead period is kind of set up for the playoffs, the bowl games, and there's a coaching convention where you know you kind of go in professionally, try to enhance yourself and meet people and network and all that. We kind of had the coaches here uh, as we finished up the staff and got the staff together. And our coaches were here just to really to try to get to know the kids. So that's what we, were, we did the first week. And from there, we went out recruiting. Had one day, uh, that first day was devoted to, to the, the, the greater metro Tulsa area. It was com committed to Oki City uh, just to get some coaches out to see guys. And we found a few guys we wanted to get on. Uh, try to connect with some guys we're looking at as walk-on players that are non-scholarship to get those guys here. Um, came back in for recruiting weekend. That first weekend was a lot of the guys that had signed, but so we didn't have a lot of new business going on that first weekend a little bit, but a lot of old business just to meet new coaches. And then we had a two-week run. So, for example, like last week, I left out last week with our defensive line coaches, and we went and spent a day in Oklahoma and a day in Dallas to see if we liked guys. And we targeted four, five, six guys, and one or two we liked, and maybe a couple didn't like us or we didn't thought they fit us, whether it be the – the player, the person, whatever. we just didn't know if it was a good fit, but we tried to find some. Came back in here Wednesday. We had a midweek visit, had two local guys that signed with us. We got them in midweek for a little visit. And then Thursday, Friday, we did the same thing in Houston. We went down and tried to find some guys there to, to see if they would fit us. So uh, thought we did, I thought the coaches did a remarkable job of trying to, thought we found some, you know, just, I kept saying, I don't want this to sound wrong, but shopping the last two weeks is like going to the flea market. And you just need to be careful what you buy. Now, there might be some good things over there, but it's buyer, you bet it's buyer beware. You better know what you're getting. And sometimes there's some great buys out there. You just got to make sure. So we were we were due diligent in taking our time. My dad always shopped at the flea market, so I got no problems with flea markets now. So all the flea market folks, I'm, all, I'm with you now. Um, but, you know, it's just, you know, you need to make sure. And we took our time. And I targeted my time not to get to a lot of schools, but I would go with certain coaches so I could be there with the position coach to see if I thought it was a good fit and the position coach. So I thought we hustled around and didn't venture too far out. I think we took a day into Atlanta to see a couple guys. We went up East Coast one day. But it's really concentrating within the metro here area of Tulsa. I thought we hit Oklahoma City and the surrounding uh, towns really, really good in our area. Got down into Dallas. East Texas, we ventured into Arkansas for a couple guys, and we actually got down into uh, Houston a little bit. And I thought the guys did a great job. So we've added, uh, what today? I think we've added nine guys. Is that correct? So the nine new guys quickly, we added, I think, three guys in the D line. Uh, Reese Baller's a tall, th uh, thinner prospect. It's a, tr a good athlete, uh, going to need some weight. He'll play a hybrid, like DN or linebacker type, maybe for us. 
But like he was at Argyle, Texas, he's coached by Jason Witten down there. Had a chance to see him in his workouts. He's athletic and liked him. Very, very great student, great kid. We had R.J. Jackson out of Choctaw. I thought was a quality guy at the end. We were able to get on, and, and he had a few options and uh, really was uh, impressed with his size. He's a great student. He's got a twin sister. I know that I think that wants to come to school here too, but was intrigued by R.J. Thought that was a really good guy at the end to get on. And then Tyler Rich. You know, I talked to Coach uh, – um, um, Blankenship, uh, when I first got here, about a couple things. I said, hey, if you got any guys that you know you think would be good walk-ons or recruits, let us know. And he said, coach, my D lineman's state runner-up, maybe a little undersized. It's a six one ish type D lineman, but a good player. And you put his tape on, his tape was as good as the guys that we had signed in the first cycle. So was really excited to get a Tulsa kid and Tyler. And, and uh, I think he's going to be a, a really solid inside guy for us. I'm, I was impressed to, to get on him late. And I think with the – Transfer portal, guys not taking as many. I think he got a little under recruited. I was pleased with him. Same with Bennett Ringleb, the uh, O lineman from uh, Union. He's an All State player. Had a knee injury his sophomore year. So I think going his junior year, missed a lot of the camps and a little under recruited. Can Ben, watching him work. He's got really good upside, great kid. I know Coach Frederick was very uh, excited about him. I was glad we, we had Bennett in. Bennett actually came in. December, right when I got here, when we actually looked at Grayson and uh, we took uh, uh, Grayson uh, Tempest uh, from his high school in the first cycle, we didn't offer Bennett until I got the new line coach in place. And uh, Coach Stanchek liked him and had a chance to watch him work out a couple times. And we're excited about Bennett. We had a Casey Carpenter who had committed the first time, didn't want to sign, wanted to meet the, the new coaches. His dad's the D coordinator, Allen, Texas. Very uh, pleased, impressed with him. So we added two linemen. Luke McGre uh, McGarry. Is a really quality uh, tight end product here late. Uh, I think he's a little bit under recruited. Uh, I think he's bigger than 225. I think he was 238 on his visit. Big, broad shouldered, was an all state defensive player at Prestonwood Christian in Plano, Texas. Really excited about Luke. Uh, who else do we have? Then our, our, um, our couple linebackers. It says CJ turns to DB. He's actually a linebacker uh, out of uh, Star City. Uh, and Elijah Wilson. Elijah was committed in the first signing, did not want to sign. He's a Duncanville State Championship team. Elijah's grandfather is Chris Wilson that played at Oklahoma and actually coached with me years ago. And so I had a chance to connect with Chris, which is pretty cool. And C.J. Turner is one of the first times I've ever had a media guy get something right. Dave Sittler sent me a text and said, there's a guy in Star City that was committed to Colorado. So I just followed him. On, I get, sent him a direct message on Twitter. He hit me back. We looked his tape. We got it going. He committed to us a couple weeks ago, got it tight. But actually, I saw Dave actually did his own little Twitter deal, but shot me a text. But that was a that was a Sittler recommendation for what it's worth. So if you guys don't think we do, listen, we, we don't necessarily like what you guys put out all the time, but we do. We do. Any coach that says he doesn't read the papers is lying. So um, anyway, so it was excited to get CJ. So two linebackers uh, in this class. And then Cam Crooks. Didn't mention Cam. Cam's an athlete uh, out of Cushing. Um, Got on him here uh, last month. He's a state powerlifting champ at 180, two-time state 300-meter hurdle champion. I think he had nine punt returns for touchdown, about 1,400 yards receiving. He's got the skill set to play a couple places on both sides of the ball and will be a great special team player and another outstanding student. So I think we got on some guys late pretty good. Um, we did lose a couple um, that we wanted. It was interesting. Uh, uh, we got on a couple guys, and after we offered, all of a sudden our Big 12 – Partners in the state offer them. Now, they had all year. I don't know where they were till last week, but uh, all of a sudden they popped. And I remember my time when I coached. I coached at one of the schools down there in Norman for a long time. And typically, maybe I'd lose a guy to Texas or A&M. I, I don't. I didn't. I don't remember battling Tulsa for guys. So I was proud of our guys for 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 bowing up and going after some good recruits. We didn't get them all, but we got some good ads right there. We competed hard for some good players, and I think these are going to be good kids, you know, that fit our community here. So that's an overview of the class. So if that's good, we'll rock and roll for questions. Get out of here. Uh, right. You know, Coach, overall, like there's a bunch of Oklahoma prospects, you know, across the state, you know, transfers and, you know, the, the whole signing day period. How, how do you feel about building a, a team around a bunch of Oklahoma guys? Yeah, I think, you, I mean, one, we should because, you know, you need to recruit in your backyard, but you got to be careful just because they're from Oklahoma. Sometimes there might be a player that's really good that maybe you just don't have a space for based on your numbers. The next year you might have a space for him. Um, I, you know, I was asked when, when in going through the process of, of the job, you know, how do you help attendance? And I said, well, it would be nice to have some local players, but you help attendance by winning. 
So if, there, if we have local players, we don't play good. No one's coming to our game, so we need to we need to play well. So to me, it's it's we want to start here. I think uh, our degree is well known nationwide, but particularly has strong value in this region. And if you're a kid from this region and you feel connected up to in the, in the northeast Oklahoma area or Okie City and Tulsa per se, and you're looking at a lot of the jobs the way these the, these two cities are growing. As some of the country is shrinking, these two cities are growing. They're vibrant. I think our degree's got some clout. I think we're going to play some great football. We've put in a good staff. I think we're a good sell, and we just tried to sell it to those guys, and we'll continue to sell it locally, uh, but we're not going to overdo it. There's a, there's, you can do too much. You can do too little. So uh, we're just going to try, and try to find the best guys. Uh, I do think we're better served to be within our region, and as we travel around to – the other great football parts of the country, we're just smart about how we do that. How much of, of this uh, recruiting cycle has been about, you know, making those relationships with, with high school coaches and being out and being active in, in the region? Yeah, I mean, we, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, we tried. Um, I mean, for example, like uh, the first week I went to as many of the top schools as I could the first Friday, but then the second Friday I tried to hit the ones I didn't get the first Friday. And then the Wednesday I was back in town for – visits last week I hit three or four while they were going around looking at the library and academics I went to see some more local guys because we were here but then after I went through coach Bree was back through and coach Stanchek was back through and coach Fry was back through and coach Switzer was back through so as we were in and out like hey hey sweat you know, Michael Hunter uh, was shooting over uh, his family still lives in, in Stillwater and I'm like hey on Saturday hey, there's a basketball game 20 miles from me there's a nice sophomore at that game go check him out so just it wasn't hard to do. So we just tried to, when we were here and the calendar cooperated, we tried to get into as many as we could and tried to be there as much as we could. Just those kids, it's one thing to say you're going to recruit it. It's one thing to make a call or drive by. We were just trying to back it up by being there again. Matter of fact, the last week, I'm, I actually missed the guy. When I went to see him, he wasn't at school. And I had our line, our tight end coach last week go back to see a guy. And we actually saw him and picked up our recruiting after we saw him significantly. Just because my gut said, hey, that, I missed this kid. He wasn't in school that day. He was at a school function. He wasn't there. And I, my gut said, told the coach, hey, next week, hey, on Friday, if you can, go by that school. Said, we need to check on this kid. So we, you know, we, we, we tried to have our presence as best we could. But at the same time, we went to a couple of those Dallas schools a couple of times. Uh, you know, uh, Coy McFarland's from East Texas. He was hitting those schools, top schools, and getting in as best we could. So, I mean, recruiting is, is relationships. So we'll keep working as hard as we can. Michelle? As a head coach who's been through this before, how important is your first signing class for the foundation of your program? Well, yeah, I, I guess important. They're all important. Um, our, 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 uh, where I was coming from, and I shared with our staff that, like, you were football coaches, but our number one job is recruiting. And you say we're at Tulsa and you have limitations, but our number one job is recruiting because we need to build relationships and recruit the best players we can that fit here and can be successful. So job number one is, is to recruit. Then job number two is once you got them, start getting to know them, connect and develop. So every year recruiting is going to be big. This first class, you got to be careful in the first class, like say that you don't make you know, uh, rush decisions. Uh, I was with, with a coach last Thursday and going back and forth with our coaches, hey, watch this tape again. Should we visit him or not? You know, let's look, let me see the trend. Just does he fit? What do we think? And just, I, I, I ask everybody, give me your opinion. You guys watch this tape every, or via the cell phone. Watch the tape. Tell me what you think. I'm not sure. What do you think? Give me some, you know, it's a, it, we're a group. I was trying to get group, group opinions. So um, I think the first class is critical. It's hard to have a great first class because recruiting is best with relationships and our relationships were short. But I thought, it's easy. I mean, who's coming today and say our class stinks? I mean, no one says that, right? I mean, you know, they're ours now, right? But, um, but I, I, I thought we, I mean, we, we, we worked hard and uh, done it long enough to try to trust your gut. I'm sure we made a mistake or two, but I, I feel really, I really like the first guys we held on to that were here, schools honoring scholarships. Those mid-year guys, watching them, feel really great about where they're starting, and I do like the kids we've added. So. You mentioned taking some of these trips with some of the assistant coaches and stuff. What does the recruiting process do in terms of helping create and form these bonds that you have with your uh, new assistants and this new staff? Meaning? Just getting to know the guys, hey, here's what we're wanting to do, all that. Our coaches? Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, I think if you brought the coaches in here a couple of times, the guy said, you know, for the most part, I I knew a lot of them already. Like, you know, Ryan Stanchek did work for me. Um, Greg Fry had worked for me. Michael Hunter played for me. I was with Coy McFarland last year. I was with Matt uh, uh, Guerrero last year. Uh, Ricky Brown I'd worked with. Ronnie Burton and I were teammates. The only one I didn't know was Switzer, you know, to tell you the truth. Um, who else we got here? Me and Coach Spurrier go back to being in Oklahoma years ago. We actually vacation at the same spot, so our kids are pretty tight, you know, for what that's worth. So, uh, really, Switz was the only one I didn't really know. And, you know, he is related distantly to Barry, so a switcher in Oklahoma can't hurt now. Uh, but also, I, I got on him through Brian Hartline. I say, Hart, man, I'm going back and forth, different guys. Got a couple of thoughts. Who do you think? He said, hey, this, this guy that played, he goes, I, I, I like him. It's something about him. Now, he's just he's starting out, but. I, you know, I think he sets up for, for good. And I, I'm a Carolina alum, so I knew him as a player. Knew he was a great player. Played for Seth Luttrell, who worked for me, and I'm good friends with Seth. Thought the world of him. So, you know, in part, I mean, all the, all, all we were able to do is, is when we were riding together, it was just uh, really just talking about these kids. Do these kids fit? And, like, for example, Ricky Brown, Ron Burton, and myself, we were all three showed up to see a D lineman. Let's talk to you. And we tried to catch them because we're in Dallas at some athletic periods. On Monday, we were in Choctaw, you know, seeing, seeing a kid in Choctaw. And on Wednesday, he was on campus. You know, that was last week. And so, you know, it was all hands on deck, and those guys did a good job. But, I mean, for the most part, I, I feel really – we got a good crowd. We got some old guys that know, they got some experience, and I think we got some dynamite young coaches. Obviously, you like all the freshmen you have coming in. I know you wouldn't brought them in, but are there some guys that you expect could make a – as a freshman, make an impact on the field in the first year. You know, I don't know. I mean, I, I mean, you you can you can play up to four games and still redshirt guys. The hardest thing when you talk. I mean, I've had this conversation with several of our recruits saying, like, look, you know, we're a developmental sport. You're a developmental player. We're a developmental program. The worst thing about developing a freshman, typically, if you're redshirted, you're the equivalent of a high school eighth grader. So you guys cover the local teams. How many eighth graders are walking out at Jinx and playing a game? On Friday night, how many ninth graders won't walk out at Owasso or, or BA or, or Union play or Bixby on Friday night? How many ninth graders? Walk, how many tenth graders walk out there? And those guys who walk out tenth graders, they end up being real dudes. Most guys don't play. Now, fortunately for those teams, they have eighth grade teams, freshman teams, and JV teams. We don't. So we have guys that sometimes develop one and two years and don't maybe play in the games like you want to. And it becomes frustrating. It becomes challenging. It becomes difficult to motivate those guys. So – you like to play them a little bit because it's kind of gives them a little juice. When we were doing that little workout early this morning, th th there's a reason why you're doing it. It's the first time we did it. It was kind of a little old fashioned mat drill, a little, little. Uh, I think uh, Scott Nero, or uh, Chris Nero, our trainer, said this is organized chaos, which is what football is. And, you know, and that's, that was the gist of what we did this morning. So when you don't play, it's tough. So you'd like to play them, but it's, I, I, we didn't promise anybody they'd play. Uh, I don't know what the players we got that can play. Matter of fact, I actually saw uh, a couple guys. I saw some high school guys do more work at their workouts than I've seen our guys do. So now that we're here, we're getting to know our guys a little bit more. So, you know, and so anyway, we'll, you know, hopefully some of those guys will play and we'll be smart and we're not trying to redshirt everyone. And I think I think it's nice to play guys and they play in a four-year period, but you have injuries. But, you know, maybe I, I'd like to think a lot of them will play, but time will tell. Personally, the last couple of months, I'm sure, have been, been a whirlwind, hiring the staff, recruiting, your Ohio State responsibilities. Do you get a chance to take a breath now that recruiting's over, or is it just on to the next thing? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's um, it really, the as we got on the road traveling, it really wasn't that. Matter of fact, I actually, when you talk about the recruiting, I actually did recruiting for, what, a day and two weeks, and I only had to make one flight. So my car dealer's going to be mad because I kept rolling his car around a little bit, a little bit more. So you got to try, I, I put some miles on his car for a bit. It was, it was, it was good work. So um, that, that, that travel's actually pretty good. You know, you kind of get – and I, I actually like uh, traveling. Um, I've always didn't mind driving and driving by myself and you little time just with you, whether you put the radio on or not or make some phone calls or whatever. So I, during the recruiting, you know, we zeroed in on some guys. We were moving around, but it wasn't hectic, crazy travel. It was regional. I think we're able to slow down. And now that we're here, we've been here this week, and you know, now with these couple snow days, we're actually just trying to be 
our players in, keep meeting them, keep knowing them. I think we're off to a great start. I thought what we did in the wintertime, getting to meet them, the way we started that first week, I, I like the way the, the, the workouts are off to, uh, too. So I think, we're, I think we're off to a great start, and I think we've had a time to, you know, it's pretty, it's, quite honestly, it's pretty calm. Any other questions? Yeah. You know, we got one? You guys always says chipper. We try to be. <laughs> Out of all the signings, let's go back to mid-September and de the December signings. Which, out of those groups, which one do you think is going to have the most immediate impact? Is it the transfer guys? Well, you would think transfer just because they're older mm -hmm. and they're coming from programs where they've they've lifted and trained. But and we we the, the the thing we did in December when I was here, we had those two weeks or those two four-day periods where I was here with the team and I was talking with all the coaches and young coaches. Just I really didn't watch videotape. Uh, matter of fact, our videotape got wiped off the computer system. Somebody took it off for some reason. But the, um, um, I, I really just like tried to get to know the team, and I was told we have positions that hey, maybe we need you know, another body or two at linebacker. Maybe we need a couple more players in the, in the secondary. And so those positions were targeted a little bit just based on you know, talking to the players, meeting the players, listening to coaches, because, you know, and, and so I would think opportunity swings their way. But some of these high school kids, I mean, you know, like Tyler Rich is a mature, strong, he won't, you know, and our numbers aren't, won't be deep there. Um, kids, you know, Cam Crooks can run. You know, uh, Grayson Tempest can run. Those are fast guys. So uh, they're not here now, but, you know, uh, yeah, you know, we, we recruited a few receivers. Um, so I don't know. I mean, you would say the portal guys, maybe, but again, no one's been promised anything. You know, we're going we're to earn it. We'll see how it goes. And uh, like I say, it's it's, um, uh, it's 24 guys. I think for the most part that uh, we think fits our school. We like some skill set. We got some development to do. But uh, uh, for short notice, uh, our, I'm proud of our staff. They 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 humped it really good, and um, we had a lot of group. Talks and video and like and bottom line. So here's how we recruited. It. It's just recruiting human nature. I like the guys I recruit. Well, it's not the guys I recruit. You got to see the big picture. So I try to get everyone to what happens when you go see someone. You gravitate to that's your girlfriend. That's your that's you know. Well, let's let's look at the whole pool. I thought our coaches did a good job of not being selfish of just like who was the best guy and why, not based on where he was from. So if that makes sense, so even though we took the local guys, the coaches were on board. Like we didn't offer some local guys till the coaches got here, because I wanted the coaches to like them. If that makes sense, and so I thought. I mean, telling you, that staff did in three weeks. They did. They did a kick job. They got after it. It was really good. I wanted to ask about Reeves. He said, uh, <coughs> six six two fifteen was his frame, and talked about the weight. But that is, he's still pretty raw, right? Because he hasn't played football for very long. But how much of his wrestling background could you? Did you see through the process here that's helped him get to this stage? Well, he's a basketball body that's wrestled, so he's got a little bit more, quote, because he's built like a – his dad played basketball at Baylor. So he's a taller, angular guy that's got – and to me, he's one of those guys. Now, his change direction speed, his toughness from wrestling, his competitive spirit shows. He's going to need some, some weight to anchor down and some strength, and he might need a year or two of good weight work, weight work as he grows. But uh, uh, we took a chance on him – because of his length, his speed, and his upside. But again, he's one of those guys, like a lot of us, that he's, he, we've got some upside to go. But he, uh, he's one of those guys three or four years from now, he's like, OK, why is he here? And he's potentially one of those guys. But he's got work to do to be that kind of guy, so we'll see. Hey, uh, you talked already about recruiting locally some. I, I've seen some feedback or heard some feedback. Even one local coach tweeted out he's happy to see Tulsa recruiting Tulsa again. Uh, what kind of feedback have you gotten from coaches and fans, local high schools, about that? Well, it's, I mean, f for the coaches, I mean, they were all receptive, seemed good. Uh, of course, some of them I knew from years years past and back, and and I just went in like uh, like it meant a lot for me when when, when Coach Frederick brought the guys over and said, Coach, I believe this guy's pretty good. And even though I didn't offer one for a while, I still like, hey, you know, his coach says he's pretty good. And his coaches had a lot of good players, so it was nice to connect with those guys. There's a lot of but like it's, you know, we've got some of the very best coaches and programs in the nation are in this area of county. They they can stack up with anyone, and there's a lot of great football areas, and some in the areas of Texas we recruit. But those schools, 
But like I told those, I told the staff, and I listen. Once in a while, there's a dude at Kingfisher, and there'll be some guy down at Idabel or someone just. I, there'll be a kid at Weatherford. There'll be a kid at Clinton. There's going to be kids. There's, there's good football in this state that's not always at the power programs. You got the four or five power pro programs. You got population with Edmond, the Norman schools, and the Oak City schools, Mustang, and Putnam, Putnam Cities, and all those. Millwoods. You got a lot of good football. But within the state, those county seats, basically every county's got that one, that one town. And whether it be Anadarko or, or Shakota, there's going, to be, there's going to be somebody somewhere at those schools. And if you do your job, you can find some, some tough raw bone fast guys can play a game so um, that was the sell to our coaches cover the backyard the backyard will be the hardest area for us to recruit because it'll get over recruited because everybody's going to go to Bixby everybody's going to go to Jinx everybody's going to go to those schools and so just because we're close that's, that's going to be that's going to be a fist fight at those schools sometimes uh, but within our state there's great football and within that Dallas East Texas area there's great football and we're going to keep hitting it any other questions good guys ladies all right, stay warm.